<sighs> Told myself I'd be good this week, guys, but here I am, a day before my video deadline, filming. So, like, let's get this going. Uh, I promised my partner that I would film a video every two weeks and upload it to keep me accountable. So, this is that. Do you ever feel like you're drowning in work and don't know what to do? Then this is the video for you. So, what is ClickUp? ClickUp's motto is one app to replace them all. And while I haven't found that to be true, it is a very versatile app that is much better than all the other product management apps or project management apps I've tried. And I've tried a lot. Trello, Asana, Google Tasks, Atlassian, Jira, Monday, QuickBase, Todoist, Evernote, Excel. You get the picture. I've tried a lot of project management apps and none of them has quite hit that G spot of project management as hard as ClickUp has. So I use ClickUp in my day job, and it helps me never forget tasks, always stay on schedule, and seamlessly identify roadblocks before they uh, become a problem. And before, I was using tools like Trello, and there wasn't really a good way to bring up the dregs of what was missing without kind of seeing this plethora of junk that didn't really matter to get things done on the day to day. But ClickUp kind of solves that in uh, many ways. And I'll, I'm gonna take you through my process of how I use it. Come on, let's go check it out. Okay, so as you can see, I'm using Loom. You know, I'm a cheap bitch, I don't like paying for stuff, but no, it's a great free software and check it out, not sponsored. Um, so here is my kind of ClickUp dashboard. Um, so what I do is I break things up into Let's go to the dailies. I break things up into four main pillars. So the first one is capture, and then I have refine, then I have review and execute. They're all pretty self-explanatory. And while I've never read, you know, the father of all productivity books, GTD, I um, I recognize that I'm taking some methodologies from that. Uh, namely capture. So before I kind of get into those methodologies, I want to take you on a tour of ClickUp and what you can do with it. Um, this is just going to be how I use it. I'm not going to get in depth on some of the features, but that may be in future videos. So ClickUp is separated into three main areas. Um, you have spaces, which you can see over here on the left. We have uh, just how I've broken up my spaces. Uh, and then within these spaces, you have folders. For example, like within the project space, I have my miscellaneous projects folder. I will be adding more. And then within within folders, we have lists. Um, so I've kind of blurred this out because of intellectual property concerns, but you get the idea. Let me show you one that I can actually show you. Um, yeah, so like I'm trying to learn mechanical routing in NX, so I have all these lists for that. So I use spaces to break up big overarching work categories, such as projects we see here, learning, recurring tasks, um, we have problem reports, and then a space that I use for efficiency improvement ideas. So within these spaces are folders. And the way I use folders is to further refine what is in the space. For example, in projects, I have miscellaneous projects. I haven't really added to projects much more since I just came up with this layout after switching from Trello, but um, I've been using it for about six months now, and I've only ever needed miscellaneous projects. I'm probably going to break this up uh, soon. So after that, finally, we have lists. And lists are where the work actually gets done. It's where you have your most granular of tasks. Um, for me, this is my learning space within the Mechanical Routing Annex. I have my learning goals, my resources, my study guides, and my evaluate list. So within all of these, we have subtasks, and you can tunnel down into seven levels of subtask. Um, and I won't get into how to, do, to how to do that, but basically you have to enable a click app uh, that is nested subtasks. And that I highly recommend that. But like, yeah, see under study, I have a various study goals here. Uh, it's really up to you though, however you want to break it down. Um, this is how I do it. So how do we use this organizational structure effectively? Um, well, I break it up into four main sections. And the first of those is capture. 
So those of you familiar with the GTD method or the get things done method know that capturing is the act of filing away all of your loose ends into a single source of truth in which you can parse and schedule. I mainly in my job get tasks um, from my email. So I can't exactly show you my work email, but what I will do is explain it to you. ClickUp has an add-on for your email. It's easy. If you have Outlook, I'll put a link down in the description. If you have Gmail, I'll put a link down in the description for the add-on. Um, but basically download that add-on and just go through your email. Anything that you can do in two minutes, do. And I recommend setting up filters to delete random emails. That There's nothing that wastes your time more than just random emails. Um, after that two minutes, if something takes longer, you need to schedule a time to do it. So use the add-on, put it in the appropriate space. If there's not a folder for it, put it in a new folder that you name. You can make a template for it. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, but basically, first you need to file everything, write everything down. One thing that you need with the, cap with the capture uh, system is you need to have tags. So the way I sort my stuff is by tag. So as you can see here, I have a training tag listed on this study task. Um, I have a bunch of different types of tags. These are the tags that I break down based on how I do my work. Uh, I have design reviews, document approvals, documentation drawing. Every, every piece of work I have falls into one of these tags. So I suggest defining uh, five to 20 tags to break down your work into. Um, there's no reasoning behind that other than below five and it gets a little uh, vague and above 20, it's just a hassle. So um, define a set of tags that every task will go under. And let me show you how to define your, uh, your default tags. Tags are stored within the space. space. They're stored within the space. So, they cannot go from space to space. You can't have a standard set of tags. Maybe that's something they'll change. I don't know, whatever. So I've created a space template. Um, I suggest you do the same. I have this thing called a blank space template and I click use and it creates all my tasks or it creates a, it creates a space that is set up the way I like it. So after you're done, maybe you want to create a folder and you call this, you know, YouTube. Uh, yeah, so the, it comes with a default list. Uh, I like to name something more descriptive. So maybe I'll call this list, um, you know, like pre-production. And I will have a um, film or, or write outline task. So as you can see, all the, ta all the tags are inherited from the space. And that's within my blank space template. So once you have a space set up with all the tags that you need, um, I recommend setting up a task template that has all the kind of parameters that you're gonna want from tasks. So every task that you enter in here, you know, from your capture system, uh, you're gonna wanna have a set of fields. I always have a start date, I always have a due date, and I do time tracking. So I always have a time estimate um, and I always have a tag related to it. I always have an assignee and I always have a priority, either one or two. I only have two priorities, um, two priority tags. So, you know, say you're, you're going to do video outline. Make sure you have your time estimate. Maybe this takes two hours and this is enabled. If you don't see any of these, um, you need to recreate your space and make sure that you've enabled all the click apps because that has all of these. Um, and then maybe I start today and the next Friday or what's great about this is you can say due date in two weeks and boom, two weeks right there. Um, then I put the tag for me, this would be other priority. Uh, write a description, do the outline stupid. And I don't really mess with the uh, ClickUp's integrated priority system because I have my own filters. 
uh, but if you want, you can. Uh, as soon as this task is created, you're gonna you're gonna want to fill out all these parameters. So once you're done going through your email, come look at all the tasks you've created. Make sure they have all these parameters. That way, you can set up your dashboards to view only the things that you that you want to view. Now you may be saying. Well, what do you do if you have a huge project that uh, isn't easily encompassed by one list or a set of tasks? Um, well, what I do is I use Gantt charts. Yeah. So say you're starting a new project. I have a, I have a task, an intake task, so to speak. Yeah. Miscellaneous project template. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to use this template. I'll call this, uh, you know, project intake new new YouTube channel, and I will uh, import everything. I'll remap the dates. One thing that's great about this is I have dates set up, so I'll remap it based on start date. Say I'm starting today, skipping weekends, never work on the weekends. So once I have that new project intake tasks. Uh, something is automatically created for me. So I have a scoping task, um, and then I have a create main project task, populate due date, and time estimate. So what these things do for me is for any overarching task, I basically, on the day that I create it, I need to set aside its scope. What I do is break a project down into main areas of concern, uh, and I identify the requirements, I identify how much it's gonna cost, I identify the schedule or my intended schedule, and always give yourself buffer time. Never assume best case scenario. Um, basically, whatever, however long you think it's gonna take you, double that, and that's like the minimum it's gonna take you, basically. Um, so then I have a task to create the main project task, populate due date and time estimate. So let me see if there's one task I could show you. You see at the beginning of the project, started around a month ago. I have my scoping, took me like two days, and then I have my create main project task. And this is the Gantt view. Um, if you don't know, you can add a view and you can click on the Gantt. So what I do is I break it down into subcategories. So I have research and development, ordering uh, and receiving parts, install and data collection, and then results and reporting. And I estimate the time it's going to take me for these overarching categories in the scoping phase. Uh, and then what I do is I identify these main over overarching categories. I then drill down into them and to my best, to the best of my knowledge, tell myself what I'm going to be doing in them. So after you've captured everything from your email or wherever you get your tasks, um, you're going to want to review it. So the way I handle this is with dashboards. So I have an interview on hold and overdue dashboard. Or basically look at everything uh, that is blocked by something or overdue or is with someone else to review. And I make sure that I'm not holding any of these tasks back. So this will give me like a really um, high level view of stuff that uh, is on hold. And I basically just review these daily and make sure that nothing is being blocked by me. You're also going to want to take this time to go through all the tasks that you just captured and file them. Make sure they have the correct status here. So I like to use these statuses. They work well for me, but kind of define it however you want. I recommend having a at least like a to do, a doing or in process, and then like an on hold or blocked and then a completed, like at least those four. And then I have a section here for dailies. There's nothing listed in here because I've completed everything, but say we change this filter where due date is tomorrow, then you can see my dailies for tomorrow. So I have a daily morning organization. This is my capture where I go through my email and I file all my tasks for the day. And usually after that, I parse my notes from yesterday and I use a, a tool called Obsidian. I'll get into that maybe in another video. Then after that, I will create my new daily notes page. And what I do is I go through all my meetings for the day and all my important events as I and I create a header for those in my notes. And I um, take notes throughout the day on that. I try to do that instead of paper. I mean, if there's something quick, 
I need to write down, I will just grab paper and write it down. Um, but I try to keep everything digital. Then after I complete those, that's kind of like my capturing. I, I capture everything in notes and then I review. So those are the first two pillars. After you're done with that, we get into refining stuff. Um, this one's kind of a short one, but basically you want to just go through everything that is currently being worked on and make sure that the comments are updated on that. You've captured all relevant info. Um, you've maybe wrote, written down your thoughts about what you're doing on that, what the next steps are. Um, and make sure within the task, you're recording the highest level of detail you can of info that is relevant to that task. That's what's great about ClickUp. You, it's really easy to compartmentalize your tasks. So some other topics, some things that uh, are somewhat useful to me, uh, the workload. If you, this is when I, when I say it's useful to enter all your time estimates and accurate start and end dates for everything. It's because this workload will give you an idea of how busy you are. So if someone comes to you and is like, hey, can you get this done? You can look at your day and be like, hey, I'm scheduled for seven and a half hours of work today. Uh, no, I can't take anything else on or whatever. This kind of gives you an accurate estimate. And this is why it's important to try and be good with uh, your time estimates. And then what I have is occasionally I'll be, I get distracted a lot by <laughs> trying to get into productivity hacks or whatever, like reading productivity blogs or looking at productivity videos. So if I have an idea for something that I can improve on in terms of efficiency, working efficiency, I will just immediately go enter it here in my efficiency intake form. And it basically routes a task to my efficiency improvements space in the ideas list and put something on my calendar to look at this idea at a future date. Um, so it kind of takes the mental bandwidth of thinking about the idea away from me. Um, and then I have kind of like a, a problem report intake form. I don't know, people in engineering are probably familiar with this, but basically if you have a problem with the product, sometimes you gotta fix issues on it. Let me know what you guys think if you want a more in-depth video, but that's kind of how I use ClickUp. And I haven't seen a ton of good videos on ClickUp, so I figured I'd share my thoughts. I hope this was helpful. Bye bye now.